Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I recently did the first scenario of Arcadia Quest using the official solo variant of the game and it seems there is some appetite for more, which made me decide to go on with another scenario in this case. And more randomly, I decided to play the second mission as the mana, which is still in the outer circle and it seems to be kind of a hard scenario. So there are easy, medium and hard scenarios in each of those rings. This is a hard, difficult one. And the solo rules even mentioned don't play this as your very first encounter. It's the second, so I might still go down in this case. But let's see what this is all about. If there's anything trolls love, it's rich food and a large menu to choose from. Thus, it's no surprise that Schmetterling, the troll chef de cuisine, chose his vast estate as his residence. With such a huge kitchen and ample dungeons, Schmetterling keeps a fresh stock of the richest food. Arcadia's former nobility, although it's debatable just how rich they are these days, what with being prisoner and prisoners and all. The manor, as it has come to be called, is now one of Arcadia's finest restaurants, guest books, their reservations weeks in advance, not just for the fantastic food, but for Schmetterling's infamous tirades. By the way, Schmetterling is the German word for butterfly, just in case you were wondering. So what we need to achieve in this particular scenario is to defeat this lovely fella here. So that's Schmetterling, who is a so-called minor villain, which means he is rolling some defense dice. And he gets two rerolls and he targets all close heroes when he is attacking. So this can really come back to bite me. All the other minions or minor minions in this case, the Goblin Archer, the Orc Marauder, the Hammer Beastman and the Orc Captain are already on level two as we have basically playing our second mission and they are leveling up at the the same as you do. And ultimately, this is the manner here. We are starting down here again. We always have to start our playthrough from the player one. And there are various ways inside the manor. We can really go through this door. We can beam in here through those teleportation points, which I believe, yeah, we have used in our very first scenario. But that's not all. I mean, he's really not easy to defeat. He comes with five health points. It is beatable i guess but still not easy but we also have to save some lords or basically one of the lords in a solo game who happen to be basically just next to those guys here the guards in this case only two of them are those measly little goblin archers which means they are not moving unless i decide to kill them but that's the idea they are going to protect those lords here and if we are successful and we have to be successful in order to win this scenario we are getting a reward in return and in this case that's the heart of angelus which is a permanent bling whenever this hero suffers any wounds heal one wound from all allies so that's a very powerful thing so even though if I might not win this particular scenario, I still want to get hold of this um, yeah, little bling, this amulet here. Really looks very, very tempting. In respect to the heroes, I have redistributed our new belongings. So Scarlet is now using the Crescent Bow and the Slingshot, so basically two ranged weapons. I was debating if I also should give her some melee attack, the parrying blade or maybe the rusty plate. For now, let's not do that. I can still re-decide that if I, when I go through my first rest, which will happen rather sooner than later. I also gave the armor to Maya. So she's kind of our second tank to some extent. And I also gave her the life drain. So she's basically our wizard in this case. Um, the only thing why I did this, she can basically exhaust each magic attack card twice. So giving her a normal weapon still would help her. So she can also use the orc beater here, for example. There are no limitations to that. But yeah, she can use those spells definitely way more efficiently. And yeah, I think with that being said, we should be ready to go again. I am allowed to go first, but I still haven't decided yet which path to take. I mean, if this guy doesn't move too soon, I'm in an okay shape. And honestly, getting in there as soon as possible might help us. The problem is in order to get basically in here, we have to go to the second um, teleportation point here, which we can only enter going into one of those blue teleportation points here. Maybe we do have to split up. I don't know. But I think ultimately one of our 
first targets should be this orc marauder. And by the way, this is now an orc captain, so they're using this pinkish purple kind of base to distinguish him. They're carrying swords, whereas these do carry some um, axes. They're a little bit more powerful than the normal or the average orc marauder. Yeah, I think I have talked my way into that. I can still decide then later on if I want to simply move through this door then as well. If everything goes well or not so well, then I might still reconsider. I think this is a very good first direction to move. I think I'm not going to start with Grom. I think we may want to start with either Scarlet or with Maya, simply because um, Grom wouldn't make it to the Orc Marauder here. One to open the door, one and two to move out here, and then yeah, he's not using any ranged weapons in this case. And if someone else is opening the door, then yeah, he could then move out directly and, and, and hit this fellow. So yeah, let's do that. So we will start with Maya because she is again our second tank in this case and she can suck up some damage, I guess. If worse comes to worse. There are things I did forget or play incorrectly during my very first chapter of this campaign, which is around the payback reaction from those folks. I will hopefully try to remember that this round, but I will not take it back. Also, I'm pretty sure it didn't change a lot of things. So I'm relatively certain no one would have died. So I think let's keep going. And I left some comments just in case anyway. Okay, let's go one movement point to open that door. One and two remaining movement points to move in here. Unfortunately, we will not be able to hit the Orc Marauder from this base because, again, you always draw the line from center to center, which is something. So, the um, line of sight rule in Imperial Assault is really amazing. In this case, I would have been allowed to draw the line from here. But okay, it is what it is. Now she is going to attack. And I think she might as well. Doesn't really matter too much. But as she isn't wounded yet, still the Nova Bolt is pretty cool. Now let's start with the Life Drain. And let's roll some dice. These level 2 monsters, um, the Orc Marauders, now have three points worth of health. I think I think during the first day only have two. So I'm it's relatively unlikely that she's going to defeat that. The overkill is a four, which for a ranged attack for a relatively weak spell is of course unrealistic. So she's rolling two dice, right? And okay, that's one hit. I take that for sure. Now we do have the payback reaction. He can move one space further. And she's hitting her still with only, quote unquote, three dice. That's at least something. She's now basically defending herself with one plus two dice from the armor here. So this is something which she really significantly improved. So let's simply hope for the best here. And I take that. I mean, she didn't hit us and he didn't hit us. And we even defended from nothing, not being hit. So I think she really got a great defensive stance. I think this was an amazing turn for her. Only one damage, but still I take it. Then let's continue with Grom. One and two moving in here. So this space is now full, but it still should be okay, actually. Yeah, it should. And then, yeah, what is he going to attack with? I mean, he has a whole arsenal of stuff. I mean, the plus one against orcs and goblins is amazing. Will it be enough for an overkill? Four. Hmm. How likely is it that we are going to fight another orc relatively soon again? I don't think it is. And so let's use the orc beater. So again, that's four dice for him. Um, and get no no defense dice for those minions still. And I think this doesn't change. I think minions never roll defensive dice. Might be incorrect. But let's see about that. Um, four? Uh, five, because again, it's the plus one um, for orcs and goblins. That's the base attack, the four, and the plus one, that's five dice. That's even better. Okay, let's see. So one, two, three normal hits already as they are. So this orc is pretty much dead. Um, and then, yeah, let's roll two more dice actually for those exploding dice or critical hits. I think these are critical hits actually. And yes, awesome. That was the overkill we needed. Even over overkill because we only needed four. 
So this fella is no more. Um, where did I do I put this? I think I found a good spot over here. We are getting one coin. We are not getting any other rewards. Again, in this mission, we don't really need to kill other enemies or so are not getting special rewards for that. But he was clearly in our way. Nice. Then it's Scarlet. And the problem is, I mean, she can move in here and attack this goblin. The thing is, is this any helpful to us or not? I would love to move her further out, but again, this space is full. So I could move her one and two spaces in here simply to prepare. But honestly, I don't really know if this goblin is an actual problem for us. And I want to hold on to my weapons for now. So let's not do that. So she's simply moving one and two and is not going to attack. This might be a terrible mistake, but I will still take my chances here. And that pretty much ends the hero's turn. We are moving over to the monsters. So again, we are rolling two dice here. And that's the crit and the bow, which means this this space is going to be activated. This fella here will not move. Keep in mind, he's a guard. But still, we are activating this space here. Now we really have a very thick deck of cards. I think these are 15 cards in here compared to the six we had before. So we will definitely see some more variety in this one, which is also one of the reasons why we basically decided, quote unquote, to go for a more difficult scenario here. So let's see. So that's a orc captain. So the next orc captain to this is this fella here. So he's getting basically three movement points. And again, he's using doors and teleportation points. So we are opening up one, two and Three, but again, there's nothing to attack. The thing is, it's still opened up. Or is that really the shortest route? Or is this the shorter route to get to us? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I, I think that's further round. Ah, that's, that's tricky now. That's really tricky. But I do think that this is the better deal because he can help protecting the troll. So a human player would play it this way. So let's play it this way as well. Okay, that was the first activation, the orc captain. And the second one is a goblin archer. Well, that's interesting because yeah, these are both guards. And I think the closest one is one, two, three, one, two, three. So in this case, I believe we get to choose but it also doesn't really matter too much mm, so i guess we are going to activate this fella here one two three and he's shooting towards the most wounded right now no one is wounded so i get to choose last game i basically yeah, I did not game it. But in this scenario, I think this is much tougher. I think I have to game the game a little bit more. So I think I get to choose because none of those has a wound. And then I get to choose. So I think this goblin is attacking Grom, hopefully giving him one, exactly one wound or so, so that he will roll one extra die when attacking. The level two goblin archer still only rolls two attack dice and again we are only looking for those bows and he rolls two defensive dice still yeah nothing else nothing to change yeah i think this is not okay so that's interesting so we basically have it both so we basically roll two more dice in this case and yes he did one damage to us Normally I shouldn't be happy about this, but for Grom, I still think that this was worth it. So he is definitely hitting harder now, which isn't bad. But those were basic, basically both of our monster activations this round. So it's back to our heroes. This time I will start with Scarlet. She's moving one, two spaces. You can move through a full space, at least if you have one friendly figure in there. So I think one two from here again we will not be able no, to hit it so I think we have to leave her here and in this instance she might want to use the crescent bow so she's basically rolling three dice the goblin has two health and needs a three for the overkill but yeah oh no that's only a one one is really bad yeah that's not great which means the goblin is hitting her back with again 
two dice here and she is still defending with three. Now that's at least something. Okay. Uh, basically the same thing. So this is blocked or this... No, this is not a hit. So we have basically already one. So this is two. We are rolling basically these two. Here. Okay, I take that. Yeah. Oh no, that's not good enough. Oh, this was basically this, right? And we have to, this is basically two damage. We have to roll one more, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, I almost blew this. Um, there are the other dice. Okay, so this is out. So right now it's two versus two. And yes, I take that. So two versus two, we are good here. Nice. But I was really hoping that we could take this fella out so that... Mm, we have, would have two attacks against this hammer beast man. I mean, we can basically suck up one wound or one one hit from this guy, right? Do we really care? I don't think we do. It's it's really it's a long shot, but I want to get rid of this hammer beast man as soon as possible. Yeah, not sure if I should rush it this way, but I still feel like it. Actually, we still have a good weapon. We are rolling. Four dice. Mm, let's do that. One, two. Oh, wait a second. Mm. We are activating this fella twice, actually. But honestly, I don't think so. It's only moving out. So I think I can open the door without triggering the guard reaction from that goblin. So I think let's do that. So with our third move, we are opening this one here. And then we are going to attack the hammer beast man. And again, I'm wrong. I keep forgetting this. This is a very tricky rule in respect to these activations. If you're attacking something that is close to you, so you're also able to fend off anyone else that is close to you. So I can basically attack this fella without getting any disturbance from this guy. So maybe I shouldn't even have shot him. Okay, but again, that's too late. We rolled a die. So yeah, we are totally attacking this hammer beast man who has four health, needs a six, which again is not really realistic. It gives us two coins. That's at least something. The problem is if he deals a wound, the target is dazed. And again, getting dazed is typically not a good thing as you're no longer rolling any defensive dice once, uh, as long as you are dazed. So we are of course using our rusty blade. I already regret that I have used the orc beater for the orc, but <laughs> that's life, right? We are still rolling four dice, keep that in mind, because of his special ability and he is basically wounded. But again, we will most likely not going to overkill this hammer beastman here. Let's roll this sucker. So these are two hits already that's not too bad then we are rolling one more die for the crit are you kidding me oh this is so bad um so he takes two and needs four more uh two more yeah that was really bad i was really hoping for something better here but okay um and then yeah he's hitting us back with um four dice yeah he's also rolling four dice and crumb only uses two defensive dice so he might go down and keep in mind the third kill in the medium level will basically end the scenario oh wow <laughs> so um that's good and bad so we have basically rolled this we are rolling one more and we are also rolling one more for the hammer beast man right and okay, so they have pretty much negated each other, which means Grom is taking three more wounds in this case. He can still, oh, basically with the next wound, he is defeated. Wow, that's quick. And as he has taken a wound, he's also dazed now. So again, he's not rolling any defensive dice. Mm, we still have Maya with us, right? So she's moving one, two spaces over here. Here. I think from here she should be able to see him. So at least in this case, the hammer beastman will not be able to hit her back, which I guess is maybe something. 
and yeah in this case again doesn't really matter she is simply using her nova board or the life drain again no let's let's split those out again she can use those twice before she has rest but we have to rest relatively soon simply to get rid of this dazed condition for grom actually so she's rolling only two dice against a very powerful enemy in this case yeah there is an advanced nova bolt i believe out there level three or so which i think rolls three dice or so but yeah, in this case and we need two more hits only only ha <laughs> our oh, one you must be kidding me teasing us really teasing us so this fella is definitely moving out but cannot hit us and they can they have a melee weapon right yeah so they can only it's a melee weapon yeah, yeah. they can only hit folks that are close and diagonal doesn't count as close Oof, this was bad now it's their turn so again this game can be over pretty soon and that's the two bows and i think two bows are not in this scenario no unfortunately we have to reroll we don't get a break another two bows and that's a bow and so basically this space is getting activated so let's see which folk is getting the troll no the troll the troll yeah i think the troll has to move out this way actually they're moving towards us mm. so that's one two and three so this can be good and bad depends on how you see that i think the troll doesn't have any nope targets all close heroes apart from that we are good then let's do the second card and that's another troll are you kidding me say goodbye to grom um because he is all basically adjacent they're not moving any further and they're always moving towards the closest hero right and only the tiebreaker is done the most wounds yeah he will simply hit grom who is not even going to defend okay so we are losing our first hero here and there or rather here and now so how many dice is he rolling four okay so if we're rolling four bows we are good <laughs> How hard can that be, right? So let's see. And yeah, not good enough. So he's basically dead. So we are losing all our wounds. That's at least something. He goes back to the player board. We are getting one of those defeat tokens. And for each of those, you have to draw, uh, how are these called? Death curses at the end of the scenario. You only also always only get one, but you have to go for the one that has the highest number. And they're typically terrible of course but i think those were all of our activations and honestly mm, i think it didn't matter too much that the troll was activated a second time nearly everyone would have been able to defeat poor grom in this case so i think i will not hold it against the troll in this case or the deck of cards there's also basically no more reason to huh, go for arrest action right now and indeed i'm tempted to shoot another nova bolt into the crowd now again she can do that a second time if this rolls any crits may target an additional enemy close to the target so and they're basically taking the same die result so if i'm rolling extremely well we could basically defeat at least two folks i guess so yeah let's totally do that she will target this fella because the goblin is close and this one is close and i think yeah we didn't roll any crits earlier right no we didn't so the goblin was there before no last round this fella was in here so the goblin wasn't close at that point in time now he is so yeah we have to roll a crit would be amazing actually a crit would be amazing and two hits I take that so this fella is dead but the problem is he will come basically to hit us so it's out of here and I think we are getting for the hammer beastman two gold I mean that's better than nothing I guess but we will definitely go down in this scenario. I think playing this for the second scenario was really bad I think I would have needed at least one more upgrade round or so in order to stand a chance here but I was really curious and then yeah he's hitting 
her she was attacking us. Yep, so again, same rules apply. Four dice. If he deals a wound, the target is dazed. She's rolling one more defensive dice at least, but that's, yeah, I think that... I mean, she will take a wound, but she will still be dazed. That's, that's I think, the downhill. And yeah, I think we will count this. So that's one, two, three wounds and no defense whatsoever. So yeah, this will be pretty bad. And we will also have to let on this foe. This fella is sent to our spawning board here. And then yeah, we still have Scarlet. Ah, I see that now. No, I think it didn't change anything because her backstab ability only kicks in when the attack monster is or the attack target is flanked basically a target with at least another enemy close to it in a solo game that's much more difficult actually because it's only us but yeah i think it didn't change anything so let's have her move she can still see that fella in here she will use her slingshot which gives her two attack dice oh yeah that will be bad i think he's even defending right yeah yeah mm. ah, he's bad <laughs> he's bad yeah and he gets two re-rolls right three defense dice yeah okay let's not count on it um and again he gets two re-rolls now the re-rolls are really massive actually okay let's see so that's a hit. Um, we did at least one here, mm, but that's not enough. We have to let's do the rerolls here first for him. That's good. Okay, so there is at least a chance that we are inflicting one wound. So we are getting one more die roll for this crit. That's another crit. Let's keep rolling. That's basically one hit we did to the. I'm a beastman. No, what am I talking about? Schmetterling, which obviously isn't enough, but one fifth on our way. I mean, why not? Then he's moving out and... Oh no, I'm so stupid. He's moving too. Yeah, he's terrible. He's a terrible fella. One and two. Yeah, that, that was the problem. I didn't see that one. Normally they're all moving at one at this level, but of course he's a mini minor villain. They're moving further out. So he's rolling four dice against her. And keep in mind, he still has two re-rolls. Oh, that's bad. So yeah, let's see. Those are four and three for her, right? Yeah, she has three natural, um, let's call it more dodge abilities. I think this is not really an armor, so she simply will try to dodge, but wow, oh boy. Okay, yeah, that's a hit. Basically, one here. One, one, and one. And first of all, we are going to... Again, the reroll pool is something we can use uh, anytime. He has a reroll pool of two, which means he's first rolling this one here, which is another hit. Then he gets the crit here, which again, he has one more reroll left. He can use it, and this is not good enough, but it's still three versus one, uh, four versus one defense. So she's taking three hits, which is enough to kill her. Bam. Yeah, that was bad. I think the scenario is over pretty much with our next activation because, yeah, the main problem is that Maya is pretty much defenseless and only can take one more hit before she is defeated. Wow, that's so bad. Uh, and this is pretty much the end of their activation. So we are rolling two dice again for the activation. Let's see, two swords are here. Here, yep. And honestly, I don't think it matters too much who's going. Yeah, there are some, maybe, okay. Let's see, that's the Orc Captain, the only Orc Captain. No, we have two Orc Captains, but the closest one is clearly this one. So he's moving one, oops, two, three. Cannot attack us. Okay, that's at least something. Then the second activation, if that's another Orc Captain, we are pretty much over and that's the war captain are you kidding me nearly everything else maybe not the troll here would have been okay but the war captain is pretty brutal so yes of course 
Um, it's still the closest one, right? One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it's still the closest one. So it's moving down one space in here. And it's going to attack poor Maya with, um, what is it? Also four attack dice. And she's not rolling any defenses because of her dazed condition. Wow, that's tough. So yeah, basically we have to hope for three bows and one hit. Or maybe three, four bows. Everything else will most likely kill her. And then we have, and that's not enough. <laughs> one, two. Let's, let's play it out, shall we? Um, two more dice here. And yeah, <laughs> six hits, which is definitely enough to take her out. So she's also being transformed over here, which means we have three defeats on our character sheets, which means we have very clearly lost this scenario here. Three deaths on medium, this was the third death. Each scenario is won by completing all PvE quests before your heroes collectively die too many times. The scenario is lost if the number of hero deaths equals, equals the chosen difficulty. This was the third death, which means we have lost the scenario. So we will keep playing and this will teach me a lesson, of course. The problem is we only got three coins out of this, right? Yeah, one for the Orc Marauder and two for the Hammer Beastman. This is not great, so I may need to go for an easy scenario next, simply because we will not be able to upgrade an awful lot. So we have lost the scenario. We are revealing six upgrade cards. The monsters have taken the lion's share of the goodies. You may then purchase up to three cards, spending your coins normally, and may save one coin as in the normal game. Apply death curses to each hero normally before proceeding to the next scenario. And this time we will see some death curses too. So here are the cards we have at our disposal. So in theory, again, we could go for the Cloak of Displacement plus the Decimator here, for example. Here's the Life Drain too, which is also nice, which gives us basically three ranged attack, but each heals, heals one wound from this hero and one close ally. So this can be pretty nice. The Crushing Gauntlet plus two dice to a non-magic melee attack. This hero takes one wound. So I don't know if that's, it's not a bad thing. What about the Cloak of Displacement, which says at the start of your turn you may switch place between this hero and an ally. Drop all quest tokens. Mm, that's nice. So if we are in a very dangerous zone somewhere, we could teleport ourselves out. But I think I will go for the life drain. We have three coins. What's the decimator here? Yeah, that's also great. It would be basically two great things now. Mm. Maybe we should go for the decimator first. And we have still one more coin for the next scenario. Life drain is nice. Maybe we should do good. I mean, he already has some good weapons, actually. No, let's spend the three coins for the life drain. For now, we will give it to Maya. And she might consider giving one of those, the, let's say, the level one life drain, maybe to Scarlet. So she has also one more item in her position. So let's click and do that right away before I forget. Nice. Yeah, but that's not all. We still have to go for our death curses. Everyone will get one because they all die, but everyone gets only one. So we have to live with what we get. So here's the one for Maya. Here's the one for Scarlet. Here's the one for Grom. So let's start over here. She has a system shock. Occupies a card slot. No other effect. Okay, that's not the end of the world. The thing is, she has to hold on to this system shock for at least one adventure. Then we are discarding this, so it's gone. But if she dies again, then she might take another one of those. But again, this is not really an ill effect. If she would carry four items desperately, then this is a problem, of course. But in this case, I guess it's okay-ish. Let's do Scarlet next, and here we have a severe nosebleed. Occupies a scar. Oh wow, for her, that's terrible. That's one more, that's a five. A five is very high, I think seven is the highest one. So this is occupying a card slot and her hit point rating is down to a two for the next scenario. Are you kidding me? Everyone else would have been fine with that, but not Scarlet. 
Wow. And then last but not least, we have Grom and Grom has, yeah, of course, he gets the no curse. Nothing happens, discard, discard. Yeah, that's great, of course, but this would have been the better card potentially for Scarlet. Wow, that was really not great. Um, so in theory, not in theory, we would move over to the next scenario. Let's discard everything here again for the next one. We are going for the level three cards. These are level twos, by the way, should have mentioned that more clearly. I think they're not really getting more expensive per se. Um, they're still get, simply getting more powerful. And again, I will leave it up to you to vote on another mission in this campaign. I think this was really, really weak. I mean, I'm almost embarrassed, but I mean, yeah, the solo rules kind of want me. And honestly, I haven't played this scenario in multiplayer mode either, actually. So for the next one, normally I would have gone for a medium one, but I think if I keep going, I need to go for the final easy one, simply to stand a chance mm, so that I get something more meaningful for the first adventure then or for the first mission in the middle ring that is so but again i will leave it up to you let me know if you want me to continue if not i have still a lot of cool stuff on the shelf which i'm going to play or feature on my channel relatively soon a huge shout out to all of my channel members and patrons you guys are really amazing appreciate your support very very big deal so if you want to support my show here you can find a link to my page on patreon you can join me directly here on youtube there is a little join button underneath this video you can leave a thanks which is a small donation or small depends a little bit on your also little button under this video like and subscribe leave a comment this also greatly helps of course and yeah with that being said hope to see you soon in one of my other videos and until then bye bye